What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny for real, whatever you want to call it. It is an honor to be able to record one of these episodes on a night where somebody actually called game. Shout out to Cole Anthony, man. Hitting the leaner, they're running off. Am I becoming a Cole Anthony fan? Because even his post-game interview was amazing. But but listen, listen, listen. It's, it's happy I am for him and for the the, I guess, the magic to get a win after a six-game loser streak. That shot cost me twelve hundred dollars. I didn't, I didn't lose $1,200, but y'all know we bet on games every single day, and I bet on the, a, a parlay. I got every other game winner correct. And yes, I predicted the Cavs beating the Nets, but that one, that one, and it cost me that much money. I, I'm excited for Cole Anthony, but the pockets are a little bit lighter today. That's all I really say. So be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. Let's get into today's show. I want to apologize. Uh, for the past week, it's been very Brooklyn Nets-oriented and I mean, it makes sense, right? They make a trade for a superstar player, and then they have basically two premieres. They have the first premiere, where it's Kevin Durant and James Harden. We have to talk about that. And then they have the premiere today that is all three of them playing together. I'm going to spend a lot of time on the Cavaliers and talk about them, but let's focus on the Brooklyn Nets right now because that's probably why you're here. Um, the things, I'm not going to be one to overreact to them losing to the Cavaliers, but everything that I have been saying about them post-trade came true today. Right, Even the first two games, when it was just James Harden and Kevin Durant, we saw these issues, but at the end of the day, they won those games because their offense was so potent that it didn't matter that they couldn't defend anybody. Today, they were just waltzing to the rim, and while DeAndre Jordan had a good offensive game from just standing and getting lobs and everything, defensively, he was really, really bad. Right, Defensively, he was really, really bad. As a team, defensively, they were really, really bad. The Cavaliers are the worst offense in basketball right now. And they gave up 147 points. And, and forget about all overtimes then. Even in regulation, they gave up a ton of points to a team that is A, the worst offensive team in basketball, and B, missing two starters. It's not a good sign. It's just not a good sign. And, and on most days, Kyrie, KD, and James Harden will have the ability to outscore their opponent. But there will be days like this where the defense is just not good enough to hold a team. Shout out to Colin Sex again. I'm going to talk about the Cavs, but shout out to him for just pretty much taking over this game. No matter what defender they threw at him, he was just hitting those shots. But the thing that scares me a little bit, and I know you want to win every single game, especially a team that is trying to compete for a championship, especially the first game all three of them playing together, it scares me a little bit at how much playing time the big three got. I understand Kevin Durant says he's 100%. James Harden is in his prime. He's 100%. Same thing with Kyrie Irving. 50 minutes, 50 minutes, 48 minutes. And again, it was a double overtime game. That is a ton, a ton of minutes. For Landry Shaman to get a DMP coaching decision was very weird to me, especially when Joe Harris played 41 minutes and didn't shoot well. Bruce Brown playing seven minutes is confusing to me because he had been very good for your team the past two, three weeks. So a game that is grinded like this, and you have an idea that this might go to OT and stuff, there should not be 50 minutes play from some of these guys. And now it's like, okay, what was it worth? I Sure, you built a little bit of chemistry, but what was it worth because you called it L? And, and my biggest takeaway from this, or, or something that James Harden's going to have to do, and again, it's only his third game with his team and his first game with Kyrie Irving, when he is the guy on that second unit, he has to treat it like he's back in Houston. That's all. Play James Harden ball. When Kyrie and KD on, ain't on the court with you, it's your team at this point. And I think he's still trying to figure that out because he was playing kind of passive in the second unit. And with that second unit, they need him to be goaded because, again, they're missing depth. They just don't have it. So, again, I'm not going to overreact to some of the things. I don't know what the remedy is for their defense because I, this is a team that I would see taking plays off, especially in the regular season, because they they do believe that they can outscore everybody. And then Reggie Perry, golly, we talked about how solid he was over the past couple games. Today he was trash. That man Jared Allen was like, bro, I know all of your moves. We played together for a couple weeks this season. I'm blocking every one of your shots. So let's talk about the Cavaliers, man. Colin Sexton is basically turning into prime. Michael Jordan in overtimes was a pleasure to watch. I have ordered a Sexland shirt a couple days ago. Wouldn't it have been amazing if I would have had it today? Now, of course, no Darius Garland, but it would have been amazing if I could just show up with that shirt today, right? Um, DeAndre Jordan, or um, I'm sorry, Andre Drummond's minutes took a significant hit because guess what? The young guy, Jared Allen, looked better today. And I love that JB allowed his younger guy to be the one on the court when it really mattered. And not just going with, okay, Drummond right now, he looks like an all-star this season, but particularly this game, he's turning the ball over. I mean, he's doing Drummond stuff without the Drummond-type offensive production. So let's go with the young guy. Young guy's playing great defense. 
He's so Jared Allen is such a good defender, bro. It is ridiculous. And of course, Colin Sexton. I like this team. Y'all know that. I've been talking about them in the beginning of the season before Colin Sexton and Darius Garland went out with an injury. Uh, I was talking about how much how fun this team was, and today they showcased that. Jedi Osmond was such a big game. I, I hope that a lot of people are tuning into Cavs games now, even though, like I mentioned, they are the worst offensive team in basketball. But what makes that somewhat okay is they're also the best defensive team in basketball. It's one extreme to the other, which is so crazy because the past two seasons the Cleveland Cavaliers have been the worst defensive team the last previous two seasons and now they are the best just like that they snapped it on I don't understand it it was fun to watch today and Twitter's overreacting and everything and it was just a fun watch I think everybody in the NBA world was watching this game because again Kyrie KD and James so that was my those my takeaway from that game so we'll move on to the next with the Mavericks end up beating the Pacers we're gonna use this first of all I, I feel bad for Indiana Pacers fans with the injuries I mean Karis LeVert T.J. Warren, and now Myles Turner. But what I was saying, let's reference this. This game right here in the next couple weeks to why Myles Turner should be in defensive player of the year <laughs> conversations, bro. Because they can guard anything. The paint was free cheese. And this is what blows my mind when people say, just trade Myles Turner and let Sabonis run the center. Sabonis can't hold his own down low. It's a fact. Offensively, he's a dog in the paint. Defensively, he ain't got it. And that's why Miles Turner is so valuable to this team. I, I feel like people that say just let Sabonis run the center aren't actually watching the Pacers play basketball. Because today is a prime example of why they can't do that. They were running out some crazy defenses. They did like a box and one with Luka. And shout out to Luka who didn't have a good game because, again, you're running a box and one for finding his teammates and allowing his other guys like Porzingis, who I guess is off of his minutes restriction, to dominate down low. You know, I feel, again, I feel bad for Pacers fans because every time it seems like things are ramping up for your team, you get a setback. You get a setback, whether it be a mass on someone's kidney or liver, I forget what it was, or TJ Warren being out and now Miles Turner. That came out of nowhere for me. I had no idea Miles Turner went down with an injury, and now he's he's out. But the good thing is a guy that previously went down with an injury, Jeremy Lamb, came back. So he can provide some of that production that you're missing in Karis and T.J. Warren, I guess. He had he didn't even have a bad game. First game back from an Achilles, I'm pretty sure. The next game I didn't watch. It was the 76ers versus Celtics. They have this rivalry, and it seems just like Joel Embiid had a great game. But the reason I didn't watch this is because there was no stakes involved. With no Jason Tatum, Kimba Walker on, on a minutes restriction, it was hard for me to be invested. I tried to watch this game. But when this game was tipping off on the same time as the Brooklyn-Cleveland game, I'm watching Brooklyn-Cleveland. I'm, I'm watching more of Brooklyn-Cleveland than this one. So I don't really know what really happened in this game other than a, a couple Celtics fans tweeting me saying that um, Joel Embiid is um, – the way he gets away with things from the ref's perspective is kind of wishy-washy. But again, I didn't watch this game, so my apologies. Um, once the team is fully healthy for the Boston Celtics and they play against each other again, then I'll really be watched because these are two teams that on paper should be competitive against each other. Trey Young, did he get his mojo back? This is so crazy because the first half of the game, Trey Young was bad again. And I was like, bro, this should be a game he dominates. He's going against the Detroit Pistons who have struggled to close out games. And, and the Detroit Pistons did what they do. Um... I guess, to just get a good lead and then blow it. But in the second half, I don't know what got into his mind in that second half. He turned it up. And, yes, he did Trey Young things. He got to the free throw line a good amount. But nothing was better than that dagger he hit over Derrick Rose that you probably saw on House of Highlights. Shout out to House of Highlights. But this is a good game for him. And, and I, I expected this to be a good game because of his quotes before. He was asked about what Steve Nash said about him as far as the way he plays is not basketball. And I understand what Steve Nash is trying to say because drawing fouls is tough and it, it's kind of boring to watch. But Trey Young's response was great. If I was doing it on his team, he wouldn't be complaining. It's a fact. So I was hoping I was getting his mojo back, and it did. Clint Capella coming out and having a 27-26 game is amazing. John Collins having his first 30-point game of the season, I'm pretty sure, is great. They won this game with four bench points, four of them. I guess you could. today is an episode where not a lot of teams have bench production, I guess, because the Brooklyn Nets didn't have any either. Four bench points in a win is absolutely ridiculous. And, again, they're missing a lot of players here. They're missing a lot of players here. And um, Tony Snell put up a Tony Snell st stat line. As far as the Detroit Pistons, I'm so confused on what this, this team is trying to do. Yes, they're competitive and, and losing games like that. But in that competitiveness, I don't think they're growing because their young players aren't playing, right? Blake Griffin played 40 minutes today. You don't need Blake Griffin to grow. Sadiq Bey got eight minutes. Sadiq Bey was getting 20 minutes a game like two weeks ago, and somehow he's basically out of the rotation. I don't understand. If Seku gets five minutes, the younger players that you should be trying to build around aren't getting minutes. 
Dwayne Casey's playing his vets. He's playing his vets, and it doesn't make sense because these vets won't be on the team three years from now. Out of all the people that played over 20 points per game, 20 minutes a game for them this this game, the only guy that should be out there getting that many minutes is Jeremy Grant. Just let the young guys play, Dwayne. You're not winning basketball games. You just aren't. Let the young guys and Jeremy Grant play because he is your emerging star, and let that be it. Sadiq Bey getting eight minutes is not helping his progression as an NBA player. Seku Dembuya, who's a lottery pick from y'all, getting five minutes in this game does not improve him him or, or your future as a team. I just don't understand it. I don't know what Detroit Pistons fans feel about Dwayne Casey, but that is, that is kind of rough at the end of the day. The younger guys should be getting more minutes. The Heat got a quality win over the, the Raptors who cooled down a little bit. Um, Kendrick Nunn, we talked about how he had fell off after a year. Look at this game, almost a 30-pointer. We love to see it, even though I didn't watch it. And then the, the last game for me, oh, no, two more games for me. Um, the Mav Magic versus the Timberwolves. We mentioned Cole Anthony hitting that game when it shot. It must be kind of tough to be a Timberwolves fan at the moment because, if I'm not mistaken, they had a really, really big lead in this one. And that's why I was so confident that I was walking out of here $1,200 richer because I'm, I'm trying to see the biggest lead was 20, and they blew that in the fourth quarter pretty much alone. And a lot of that has to do with Cole Anthony hitting that great corner shot and then, of course, hitting the game winner. They it, it It's great to see Evan Fournier back because they needed his offensive production. I don't know how many he ended with today, but I know oh, he ended with 24 immediately, just back into the lineup. So it was great to have his production again. And again, Cole Anthony hitting those big old shots. I don't understand what Coach Saunders is doing as far as like when this game was ending. When this game was ending, they tried to go small ball. And they don't have defenders. Like, the biggest questions I had about this team was who the hell is defending anything on this roster from top to bottom, other than Josh Okogie, I guess. Who's defending anything? And they didn't have, they don't have it. So to go small ball is kind of crazy when you don't have any defenders. Small ball lineups typically work when you have good defenders. Average defenders. They don't have any of that. So, yes, it was bad. And that's pretty much it. Oh, we got the DeAndre Aiden game, which is great. He plays strong, and they got a win against the Houston Rockets. I did not watch the other two games because league pass was bugging, and it just kept it just kept buffering and buffering and buffering. But I'll give a lot of love to the Clippers for continuing to stay consistent. 32 points from Kawhi. I don't know how he did it, but he did it, baby. And did Paul George continue his thing? 19 points. Solid efficiency. 12 assists? Oh, there it is. Shout out to Paul George, man. That's all, man. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like. Oh, before we end this one. I'm going to say this to the end so you can click off if you want to. Um, please, please, please don't try to, like, hit me in my, my DMs or, or my mentions. Like, Kenny, be sure to talk about this game. I, I, I'm only one man, and I can't watch every single game, right? I can't watch every single game. So I may have missed your favorite team's game, but that's not going to happen for all 72 games. So I may not have talked about your team today, your game today, but I might hit them on the next game. I might hit them on the next game. Just be patient, man. Be patient with me. It's a one-man team around here. You know what I'm saying? I'll see y'all soon. Call game.